Hello to everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Dimitri and in this video I show you how to transform an average looking piece of wood into something quite stunning. The log you are seeing here is more than 50 years old. I need this log as decoration for a fireplace I'm currently building. The log has a flat and smooth finish to it. That's because a few weeks ago I removed all the wood that was damaged around this perimeter. This piece of wood has waited a long time for this and I can't afford not to give it the treatment she deserves. I'll show you how to do it, what tools you need and everything in between. I want to apologize in advance for my very bad English. I make plenty grammar and pronunciation mistakes. I've learned to speak English by watching YouTube videos, those in English of course, and I worked in England last year for a few months. Now let me show you the tools you are going to need for the job and let's crack on with it. Now I'm gonna show you some of the equipment that you need in order to do this job. Basic equipment is the grinder. If you have only a bigger one or just the small one, that's fine. If you don't have a grinder, you can use one of these, but realistically it takes way too much time to, to work with and it only works on softer wood. So for example, things that you could do in 10 minutes with a grinder, this takes more than one hour and it's really, really tiring. But in case you don't have one and you have maybe a smaller piece of wood, you can use one of these and it, with a bit of work, you can obtain some wonderful results. Now let's talk about the brushes. And this is uh, one of the most important things is there are many different types of brushes. These are 100 millimeters and 120 millimeters. This, for example, is for very hard wood. This is very good for the finishing touches or working on softer wood, this is better. On soft, on soft wood, you don't want to use one of these because it's uh, gonna ruin your wood. The small ones are for the small grinder. Now let's talk some of the other equipment that you need. And this is protection. So first of all, a pair of gloves. Eye protection, absolutely crucial. So now there are different type of eye protection. I use this because I have glasses and I can fit it over my glasses. And if another thing, this has some vents in it. It costs pretty much 20%, just one or two bucks more than those without vents, but it really does help with fogging. Very, very useful. Next one, ear protection. Again, these things produce very, very high pitch noise. And the other one is breathing protection. Don't buy the cheap ones. Uh, buy one of these, spend a bit more money. I remember the first time I tried to do woodworking, I used one of those really cheap things. After one day, I had difficulties breathing because a lot of that dust entered into my uh, lungs. It really felt bad, so I went the second day and bought one of these. These are very good investment. Even the glasses and uh, ear protection, you're gonna spend 10, 20 bucks for them. And if you take care of them, they're gonna last years, maybe even decades. They're gonna last you a long time and these are absolutely, absolutely worth spending money on. So some of the other extras, it's a sandpaper. When you finish everything, you wanna smooth things, make them look really shiny and beautiful. This is 400 grit, and then I have uh, 150 grit. So these are pretty much all the, the things that you need in order to properly work on this. And tighten it really, really well. Now, some basic rule of thumbs. Don't you ever be on the direction in which the blade is spinning or this is spinning. For example, if I'm gonna use this, don't do this, don't do this stuff or you in front of it. Because if one of these break, the chances of it ending in your face is very high. So when you always use a grinder, always be behind it. So you work this way. This makes things a lot, a lot safer. And the other one, don't do it with, with one hand. You can easily lose the grip on it. Always put a hand here and another one and work with it nicely. These are the absolute basics and they are gonna really, really lower the risk of you hurting yourself. A very good idea is when you start, as I'm doing here, to experiment and learn on a side of the wood that is not going to be visible. There you can learn how to get the desired result and in case you make a complete mess of it, no one is gonna see it. Now we start working on one of the sides that is going to be visible. I'm using the big grinder with the hard brush. A good rule of thumb is to move constantly the grinder. If you concentrate too much on a certain spot, you run the risk of digging too much into the wood. So always move and don't put pressure on the grinder, because if you press the grinder it's going to create a lot of scratch marks on the wood, and that is going to require a lot of sanding. 
Think of this as if you are dancing and the grinder is your partner. You have to constantly keep moving, but you also have to be delicate, smooth and not push or pressure your dancing partner too much. So this is already after only 5 minutes of work. As you can see here the grain is really starting to show through and uh, this absolutely shows the beauty of the wood and it doesn't just look flat. Now, as you can see here there are plenty of scratches which are made by a brush here but that's not a problem that's why I have the uh, softer brush and uh, the sandpaper so we can finally with the sandpaper we can make it beautiful and um, smooth. Here I'm hooking up the small grinder with a soft brush to do some detailing but it's taking way too much time so I'm starting using the big grinder again but this time with a soft brush. And it's not really working. This log is the hardest wood I ever had to work on and the soft brush is just not doing much so I switch back to the harder brush. Now with a steel wire brush and a lot of elbow grease, we refine some of the rough spots created with the grinder. Now some of the things that I'm experimenting is, is uh, some of these metal tools. Now if you don't have one of these, uh, a chisel is, uh, is fine or even a... Um, how is this called? A... I later learned on Google Translate that that is called a flathead screwdriver. The point of this is uh, you go into the grain what they're doing is you're just giving it a bit more definition. This is one of the most beautiful and enjoyable parts of the project. Here we are essentially sculpting. When Michelangelo was carving a block of marble, he said that he wasn't making the sculpture. The sculpture was already in the rock, he was just undercovering it. I think Michelangelo was a bit too humble. But for what we are doing here, the statement Michelangelo made fits quite well. What we are doing here is just removing the superfluous and discover the beauty in the material. This process is a very creative one. When I do this type of work I don't listen to music or think at anything else other than the work I'm doing. This work for me is bliss. The sun is shining bright, birds are singing and there is a light breeze transporting flowery perfumes from the blossoming spring. I wouldn't trade this for anything else.
I just shut up and listened to the nature around me and the tools carving the wood, breathing deeply and enjoying these blissful moments for their wonderful simplicity. And now it's sandpaper time. It looks good, doesn't it? Now all the wood grain is visible and by carving it, the log has more volume and a beautiful contrast is created by the creamy soft color of the wood and the dark shadows in the wood grain. But it's not finished yet, there are a few more steps to do and in the next video, I'll share with you how to paint wood and make it look like a work of art. We are also going to finally finish it. I wish this video gave you some ideas. If you liked the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Also, if you have any suggestions on how I could improve my videos or even criticism, I would really appreciate to hear them. I wish you all a fantastic day and see you next time.